This is a Kahan TV sports break. And it's a special day here at Kahan TV Studios, as it always is when we have our NBA expert, Vlad Kitajic, here in studio with us. We promised we'd have him, and this time we delivered. Vlad, I was a little worried you might get hit by a truck or something, and I would have looked like a huge liar, because we already promised you'd be here. But thank the gods that didn't happen. How you doing, Vlad? I can't complain, you know. Everything's okay. Everything is everything, as they say. They say that, I guess. <laughs> Wonderful, Vlad. Great to hear. Vlad, let's get right down to it. Before we get to the playoffs, we were talking the other day, and you suggested that we talk about the quality of play in the NBA. Mm -hmm. it, it may be a little bad timing because we just had the most exciting game of the playoffs so far last night with the Wizards and Celtics, but overall, these playoffs aren't really doing it for us, are they? I've been trying to be professional and take this show seriously. In pro wrestling, we would call ourselves marks, right? Just pretending that we're enthusiastic about something even though we're not. But this isn't the NBA we grew up with. Is this the least exciting NBA playoffs that you can remember, Vlad? I mean, first of all, what, wouldn't it be amazing if we were doing this show 10, 15 years ago when basketball was just amazing, right? But yeah, this is terrible. This is terrible quality. I mean, this goes on to what I was saying, and this goes basically with what I was saying earlier in one of our earlier shows. NBA, it's, it's gone. The way that we watched it, the way the intensity, the defensive focus, just everything about the game that we loved as kids, it's all gone, man. The style of play, the way the game is played currently has killed this league. And uh, I don't know what the solution is and how to get it back because maybe, a lot of people don't even see it as a problem. A lot of people don't even see that there is an issue. A lot of people love the way the game is played currently, and I don't understand. I cannot fathom what you could like possibly about the style of play in today's NBA. It, it's unbelievable. Well, it's more up up tempo, maybe for the for the ADD type of person, I guess. I don't know. It's just quicker. That's the only thing I could say. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. Not only a lot of the matchups not being competitive, but the the plays that are being run are just like. Ugh. I mean, even last night in a game that everyone thought was a great game, you know, the Celtics Wizards game six. I was thinking to myself, the Wizards don't need a three. They're facing elimination. Yeah. And John Wall jacks up a three right. off the dribble with a hand in his face. It went in, so it looked great. Mm -hmm. But if he missed, we, we would have all been like, what kind of shot was that? Absolutely. And then the next possession, the Celtics down by one, and the best shot that they could get is an off-balance three-pointer from Isaiah Thomas. Does this come down to coaching? Is it bad game management, do you think, from these head coaches? Um, well, as far as the Celtics last play, I can't really blame them too much for that. That was like less than, about less than two seconds, so they had to get something off really quick. Um, yeah, obviously the the wall shot, and it was basically here's they give the ball to Wall. Whatever happens, happens. He whatever he does is gonna you know that's gonna be our season. So if he makes it, if he makes whatever he does, he hits a two, we go to overtime. He hits a three, we win. He misses it, turns it over, we lose. That's it. There's no coaching there. There was no coaching in that play. He didn't set up anything. Uh, he, could, he didn't even have to call a timeout. He could have just told them to just throw the ball out there and give it to John Wall the same way. Well, what coaching is there? What play was set up? What well, was run? Nothing. He held the ball. He jacked it up from 30 feet, and he and he hit the shot that saved their season. Good for him, but awful shot. I said it. When he left his hand, I, I mean, I was like, wow. I said, wow, that's terrible. But it went in, so you got to give it some credit yeah. for that. I mean, the only team that I see running plays was the team that just got eliminated by the Warriors, the Jazz. They run plays. They run sure. plays, at least. But, look, speaking of coaching and bad game management, Mike D'Antoni was once again exposed in the playoffs, this time by the Spurs, made no adjustments to the team's strategies. Space and, space and pace or die, as they say, right? And they die. Do you think Mike D'Antoni will ever win an NBA title? I guess... Let me break that into two part two part question. Could D'Antoni win a title the way he coaches now, and if not, will will he ever adjust his game or evolve his tactics to get a better chance at getting his teams deeper into the playoffs? D'Antoni title that's like an oxymoron, right? That can't those two things just don't fit. No, it can't happen. No, uh, uh, his he's. His style of play, the way he coaches his teams, is not suited to win an NBA championship. It never will be. It's all offense, no defense whatsoever. No idea what they're doing defensively, and the offense is just all just like you know, just it's all relying on one guy, three point shots made. And if that's not happening, you saw you saw what happened to that team. They were badly exposed, t taking awful shots, and uh, it's it's awful. And no, he cannot evolve. He is what he is. Should have never been. 
I don't care what kind of coach of the year award he's going to get or what they're saying about him. He never should have been allowed to coach again in this league after his disastrous stints with the Knicks and with the Lakers. He was exposed horrifically as one-dimensional, and I can't believe only in today's NBA could this possibly be working again that he had a successful season with Harden and, and, and the Rockets. Only in today's NBA. All right, well, well on that Rockets-Spurs front, I just want to get some of your thoughts on that series. Was it all James Harden's fault, though? Because he's getting a lot of a lot of criticism that he, he choked. He definitely choked. It was a big game, game six. But D'Antoni wasn't there to wrangle him in before the game got out of hand. What do, what do you think of happened? It's both their fault. It's Harden's and D'Antoni's. In that game five, he played seven. He decided uh, since Danny got injured, he's only going to play seven guys, which is unbelievable. Uh, I can't believe he took that stance. He, just because it once worked with the Suns, where they only they shortened their rotation, does that mean it, it should work in today's NBA, where in a critical, pivotal moment? And then he has that audacity to say, you know what? I think Harden might have been fatigued a lot this season. I mean, are you kidding me? He played almost the whole game in that game five, but. Some a lot of blame goes to Harden because I didn't understand what he was doing out there. I mean, no attempts to go to the rim, no attempts to pass the ball off. Just he held it for like twenty seconds. He just literally held the ball and just would fire a shot at the end of the clock with a hand li- literally right in his face. Um, it's, uh, they completely blew that game, blew the series. Both D'Antoni and Harden deserve, I mean, so much criticism that it, it, there's not enough words to describe how much criticism both guys deserve for her- horrific coaching. Horrific play calling and also horrific just play by Harden. First in Game 5, and then what was that in Game 6? Are you kidding me? Uh, to the point where Stephen A. Smith was saying that he was drugged or something? Like, <laughs> he wasn't drugged, he was just awful. He's awful. He's always been that type of player where you can't rely on and where the going gets tough and uh, nothing changed here. He's just that type of player. Never going to win a championship with James Harden as your best player. Never. Alright, well, I gotta move on. One last thing on how we haven't been very excited with these just this year's playoffs so far. We haven't really been getting any interesting matchups in the throughout the first round and second round. I had a thought though. Is it time that we finally did away with the East West format? Get some new, maybe some fresh first round series. How would you like to see like the Thunder and the Hawks, for example, in the first round? Maybe not the most exciting matchup, but at least it's brand new to us. Right. You know, and maybe the Cavs would have some actual competition to face. Sure getting to the finals instead of getting a free pass to the finals every year. Right. What do you think? It, I mean, it's, it doesn't answer the, the main problem that I was talking about, about the style of play and how it's just completely ruined the league, this whole the shooting threes at will and not playing defense, basically. But, yeah, why not? It's a change. I like it. The East is so awful nowadays that why should LeBron have a free reign playing against nothing, nobody, zeros, the Raptors, the Celtics, the Wizards? What a joke. What a complete joke! It's 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 a cri- it's criminal. It's criminal what's going on in that conference right now, and that he's getting such praise for sweeping these teams that are just junk. Okay, whatever. But uh, yes, I'm all for that because that would shake things up a little, maybe make things a little bit interesting. Anything to shake things up in its current state. I'm, I'd try anything at this point if I was the commissioner. Just anything, please, because I can't. I can't with what's going on in today's league. Uh, yes, sure. No more no more conferences. Just. Have the Cavs play the the Thunder in the in like this second, uh, second round, round yeah, of like a playoff a second round or, matchup. or something? I like agree. That. I don't. I mean, I don't think it'll happen because it's probably just more money for travel and playing gas or whatever. I don't know how it works, but I I'm sure it's like baseball. They they don't they they don't want to spend more money for airplane flights. So I don't see it happening. But I think it would be a good idea. But we got to move on. The Wizards were your one upset pick of the of the second round of the yeah. playoffs so far. You're still alive to be 100% through the playoffs. Yeah. We will see Game 7 tomorrow. Yeah. As with all Game 7s, it's anyone's game. So we don't really need to get a pick from you. Whoever wins whoever wins that series, we all know where we're headed. We're on a collision course that we've been on all season. We're awaiting the Cavs and Warriors in the finals. Usually we have nothing to talk about on that front, but there is one development we can discuss. Steve Kerr, Golden mm-hmm. State's head coach, has been ill. Not sure if he'll coach the finals. Mike Brown is the top assistant there. He used to coach LeBron in Cleveland, and he used to coach your Lakers. I know you weren't too high on him at the time, but can this affect the Warriors in the finals, or at this point, does this team just coach itself? Yeah, I mean, they probably coach themselves at this point, but um, he's the only hindrance or the possibility of them not making the play or making the playoffs, making the finals would be him, because... Oh, you think they can't have a possibility of not even beating the Spurs? Yeah, I mean, 
it's the great Popovich versus Mike Brown. I mean, I would be if I'm a Warriors fan, I, I'm, I'm praying Steve Kerr comes back because that's scary. I'm sorry, I don't care what situation, how much better they are, how much more talent they have. Interesting. If you have Greg Popovich against Mike Brown on the other end, and Popovich throws some kind of wrinkle that, and Steve Kerr is not there, you're really, I mean, you're you, I would be worried because, yes, talent wins out in the end, but Popovich can make something happen just because he's such so much better than Mike Brown, who is a horrific head coach. Fine as an assistant, no problem there. Great as maybe a lead defensive assistant. Head coach never never was a good one and never will be. And that's the only problem I see with the Warriors right now is that Steve Kerr not there. Eh, no, that, that was a little wrinkle. That's the only wrinkle, though, for that team. All right, Vlad. Well, we got to wrap it up. We appreciate your expertise. I don't know what we'd do without you. We appreciate your time. It's a pleasure. 100% of the time I see you. That comes... From the bottom of my hearts. <laughs> That's great, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, I always love coming on here. It's always fun. I, I love it, man. Thank you. All right, bud. That is all for this edition of Sports Break. We will see you when we see you.